my God, look at us. We're twinsies. Ho, ho, ho. We yes, are twinsies. You, yes, you called me? <laughs> <laughs> and you know he answered. Hi, everybody. Welcome to If These Walls Could Talk. And if you, if you can't tell us apart. We were separated at birth. Yes. I'm Wendy Stewart. And I am Tim Moss. Yeah, we're so happy to be here with you today. And I took these earrings right off my Christmas tree, <laughs> right onto my ear. I was in an event here at Pangea last night. Kobe Co does an amazing show oh, here once a month so incredible. called Nouveau Riche. The talent was blow away. And I wore these earrings last night. And he'll be doing another one in February. Of course, we'll announce it. There's been yep. so much, so much going on lately. Tim oh, and I God. can't keep up with yeah. ourselves. Yeah, I can't even, honestly, cannot even remember every place I've been and everything I've done the past couple of weeks. Well, yeah. everybody else can. Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> I did a very fun show at Pieces Bar yes. for the Imperial Court. Court to benefit City Leap Housing. It was really great. I did my Christmas parody. I had a fantastic time time there and then let me see oh my god I, I wrote everything on my hand oh, today it. because I can't remember anything Randy Edelman was in town Tim you were yeah, there for yeah, that that was fun Saturday at the night. townhouse and uh Randy Edelman played a couple of songs you know his name because he scored just about every movie you could think yeah. of but yeah. it was a highlight for me because Tim sang yes you I did, did. I, I sang, sang a it song was, it was so great we love that <laughs> and then um the Explorers Club. We're back open again. Uh, we are on 70th between Park and Madison. Oh, and we have our in-house lecture series. Not as much as we used to. You know, we're rolling uh -huh. it out slow. But we had somebody that was the speaker from uh, Save the Giraffes. Mm -hmm. You are probably wondering, everyone knows about saving elephants and rhinos. Even myself, I had no idea that giraffes are on the verge of extinction. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and they're absolutely beautiful. So um, you can Google them, learn more about giraffes, why we have to save them. And is that all? I have to keep looking at my hand. What a pathetic thing I am. <laughs> the Glam Awards. Yeah. Tell them about the Glam Awards. The Tim. Glam Awards is uh, January 30th here in New York City. But we are up for... <laughs> A Glam Award for Best oh. Podcast for this show, Yay! If These Walls Could Talk. And you can go to glamawards.net and vote for us in People's Choice. You just click on People's Choice and then go to vote. You don't have to have a code or anything. Isn't that great? So everybody can vote, yeah. Um, but for the past two weeks, I have been, I don't normally do this or talk about this, but I have been on the phone with Dish TV. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot for of my father, <laughs> For my father, who's 93 years old, I'm just so disgusted and disturbed with them. And the, the whole, they've just got that whole corporate mentality. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with them. I really am. I've, I've tried everything, everything with them. And it's just, you know, how corporations have just become so distant from the public. Right. And, and they, their, their setup is they have the, the customer service, which deals with the people. And then you've got the corporate and the corporate Doesn't care. makes the policies right. that the, that the, customer service has to stick to and they won't they won't talk to the public corporate won't so it, it's just it it's a big mess I but i am going you, to be talking to corporate tomorrow. you need to talk to corporate but i will tell you you're probably the 30th person right just all over the country that is complaining about dish tv mm -hmm. if you're using dish tv and you can switch okay people like well, sling they like sling. oh yeah that's much better yeah i would definitely recommend in streaming services that type of thing but like for my father, he's 93. He, All I he know. has is TV. He doesn't have right. internet. He doesn't, he's like not going to learn Like computer. every 93 year old. Right, right, exactly. And so he needs television and the wow. service that he's going to go to probably isn't any better, but it will have the cho the television choices that he wants. And they're basically holding him hostage right now. So <laughs> terrible situation. But, yeah. Blah. But anyway, something that's not blah is our incredible, <laughs> incredible. incredible guest In today. Incredible guest. Oh her. my God. This woman that we have on today, I've I've known for like my God, a couple of decades. Uh -huh. um, she's gorgeous, all right. She's talented. She's gorgeous. She's smart. She is probably one of the biggest activists in the mm -hmm. fashion industry, and she's going to let you know why. And she's also known as the fashion fairy godmother, which I, I she is, isn't she? <laughs> well, you know what? Enough talking. Let's just bring on the one and only dynamic entrepreneur, 
Catherine Schuler, slide oh, on into yeah. slide, on slide in. on in. Oh, which wow. means I'm sliding on over. Slide okay, are, are we are we good here, Tim? Tim always I finds think, our position. Oh, look I how think we, we're positioned. Wow, how nice we're we all, all, I, it's all awesome. about position. Oh with my me. god, we <laughs> are you. <laughs> And I'm in the middle. Am I, am I the monkey in the middle? I'm telling you, that's why I pulled this out because I was like, if I'm going to be flanked by two fabulous and gorgeous <laughs> models, I got to up my but, game. But today. I think, Tim, we're all in like these prints. We look like wallpaper in a bordello. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Oh, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> Vintage Versace. Yeah. There, there, there you and go. Cheers. Catherine, thank you so much for, for being here. Oh, my pleasure. And for coming, oh, coming yes. in here live. Uh, I was so fortunate to connect with Catherine, of course, at Pangea, where we broadcast yeah. from. Mm -hmm. You were here that night. Were you performing that night here? Well, I am performing in the front room. Uh, and it's Thursdays or Mondays. It's an open mic. Right. So I play violin. Mm -hmm. And oh, I just... Wow. Want, you know, I want to keep that kind of uh, up, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. my production assistant is Jackson Sturkey, and I love this place. I've loved it for a long time, and mm -hmm. it kind of fell off the radar, and I I saw Stephen Syed here um, a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I suddenly was like, I love Pangea. I yeah. just want to go back it. there, and it. so Arnaldo and I may be doing a fashion brunch here, so, you know, there's all yeah, kinds of programming is. stuff yeah, yeah, that yeah. happens, because I used to have Runway the Real Way at the Hotel, if anyone's oh, out there. Oh, I love you the hotel, of course. So I had the Destination Brunch there, and I looked out and saw everyone and said, oh my God, there's like toddlers and transvestites and tourists yeah. and I love all those she's the three teens yeah. toddlers transvestites and tourists oh my <laughs> oh my and I said you know what this is the crossroads of America anyway right. of the world anyway right. so I just said okay fashion diversity because I was always known for fashion diversity because of what I did with the plus size industry and I just said you know what it isn't just about size it's about age it's right. about height yeah. it's right. about I, I, um, I love your platform. ethnicity about um uh, uh, you know, nationalities, uh, abilities, you know, so I just named it fashion diversity on the inclusive catwalk and it's runway the real way. Uh, and I love and it. So when did, when did you start doing this? 2010 to 2014. Okay. I'm okay. going to tell you something interesting. I was so excited to get into this with Catherine who was really ahead of their time. What's happened is there's been a backlash. Okay. You were ahead of everybody, but this year with black lives matter with uh, transgender, all of a sudden all these fashion magazines and she'll back me up on this. You open up, I open up Harper's Bazaar. All right. So they had gone to the other end. Not only was every, every single Everything, model was black, yeah. black, they weren't models. Yeah. I'm like, wow. what? Uh, yeah. What's happened is corporate has really sold out, and uh -huh. and I think what happened was is the internet with Instagram and right. Facebook, everyone's oh, a model. Geez. Everyone's a model, yeah, and, right. and they also, I mean, if they get there's a there's a model who I really respect because she is five five, a size twenty six, and she's all tattoos. Oh, I know and, who that is. Yeah, so, would you Tess remember Holiday. her name? Yeah, yeah. Tess Holiday. Yeah. And I thought, wow, she's got a uh, an entity called F Your Beauty Standards. Right. She had about six hundred nine. 99,000 followers wow. when I first got to know her. She's up to over a million. Wow. But she has a clothing line. She got signed by Milk. Right. Um, uh -huh. So um, she's it, beautiful, though. She's, she's beautiful. Beautiful. She looks like she a model. She does look like a model, but. Um, in terms of all the other standards that you and I were tortured about, Torture. we weren't allowed to be ourselves. And I think the internet has opened up the the aspect of visual yeah. differentiation. So I love you're that. used to looking yeah. at somebody who doesn't look like a standard size. And that's good and bad because everyone now thinks they can model right. and the standards have lowered and uh, I can't get, absolutely. you know, and you can't get paid like we used to right. get paid. And the piece right. of my pie has been eaten into, exactly. in, into. Uh -huh. I mean, exactly. I, right. we know each other from the seventies. I yeah. can't believe well, it. You were, mention, you were mentioning the standards mm -hmm. that now when you first started in the seventies and the eighties, I would really like to, to hear about oh, just uh, because it just seemed we were coming out of the years of Twiggy. Yes. And which was, and she was my nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> I could never get and skinny enough. They had a me specific, up. they had a specific standard that they right. made these young girls yeah. and boy a lot body. of times like boy 12 body. and yeah. 15 right. years old. Androgynous, whatever. Right. Androgynous uh -huh. boy and it morphed body. into heroin chic. Yeah. But in those days, 
um, because it was the 60s, everyone was mod and you could see through your thighs. And, you yeah, know, you had to have it. No, I remember this. This is so bizarre. I knew these models that there was a doctor in New York, Dr. Schwartz. I know because I went to him. I could never get skinny enough. But you oh had to have, what God. was the measurements between the thighs, the space? Yeah. Had to measure... Tim, it was it was like this, oh. like this much space between like yeah, your, your thighs couldn't rub. And yeah. so let me just add, yeah. did you were you, were both of you trying your damnedest to get this skinny? Yeah. You would try I, everything. You would said, starve yeah. yourself. Uh, you would I yeah. don't have that kind of body. Like wow. in, in the seventies, I first came here. I brought my boyfriend. I'm from Pittsburgh. Ah, and, Pittsburgh PA. PA <laughs> and my boyfriend was the best drummer in Pittsburgh. So um probably in nineteen seventy two, we schemed a way to get to New York because I wanted him to get into a band. So I said, um, I'll take my dad's car one day and I'll drive you up. So we drove up. I dropped him off. He started auditioning. He got into the stilettos, which then morphed into Blondie. So I was part of the downtown scene here oh, love in the 70s. So I, and that's one of the things that I was always just a drummer's girlfriend. Right. And so I never really uh, found my place there because I just brought him here and I thought, oh, and I loved it. I I mean, I really loved it. I think it was more my dream for him <laughs> than his dream for himself. And so he, he, and it was very, very tough in those days. I mm -hmm. mean, there were a lot of drugs and yeah, it's very, very unsafe yeah. on the lower East very side. Yeah, uh, yeah. This whole area was, was dangerous. It was and filthy. And Mercer it Arts was... had just collapsed and they were looking for another place. The New York Dolls were the glam oh, rock, you know, yeah. so glam it really rock, wasn't yeah. the punk movement. It, I think England mm -hmm. influenced um, the downtown scene and yeah. it became the punk movement Absolutely. but in those days and so debbie and i kind of you know bonded because she wanted me to like keep billy you know going and 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 i i, I couldn't I'm, i was back in school you know right. so i she wanted me to be in the stilettos but then that wouldn't have worked out so i just you know i just kind of stuck with it and then i moved up after i graduated in 75 so by then it had morphed into blondie it right. got out of the stilettos and i was just still i didn't know where i belonged so I went to acting class because I was we very are, where did you go? shy. I went to Michael Sawyer's studio and then I went to Bergdorf. HB uh, Bergdorf, Bergdorf. HB Studios. Bergdorf, yeah. Uh, yeah, Herbert Bergdorf and um uh, studied with uh, all the, the Bill Hickey. Handman, Bill Hickey, Bill Hickey yeah, oh used God. to drink out Michael of his teacup. Bennett. You know that story, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Wrap his legs around him. He's so skinny. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, so, it was you know, great. and I found myself in that respect. And my acting teacher said, you know, you should try comedy because you're really funny. <laughs> you're like Imogene Coca mix meets Marilyn Monroe. And I thought, well, that's kind of a good mix. And <laughs> throw in a little loose a ball. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You, know, so, you and I are very similar, by right? the way. I was yeah, going in the exactly. same direction. <laughs> so, um, um, I was like, that's great. So um, on that same floor, there was a photographer from Ford named David Steinberg. And he said, you have a model face. So I yeah. said, all right, Let's so um, maybe, you know, let's put a book together. So we worked really hard, got this great. And he knew Jerry Ford. So he got me an appointment. So I took my book over there and I was so <laughs> happy. And I was like, ready to show <laughs> them. And I right, And I was like, she opens the book. She didn't look at me. She came out. She looked through the book hands and she goes you have to lose 70 pounds and she turned on her little heel and she went back into sashay her room. away and i was so crestfallen i mean i could and you just burst my balloon and i said my god in one you know 70, 70 pounds, pounds two words right you, you have to. you must lose 70 pounds in right. four words she devastated me and i said i this isn't for me this is not for me. She said to me, wow. the angles in your face don't match the angles in your body. I got that too. Cause I yeah. had a oh big body God. and a thin face. Yeah. And they were like, we, at that time, oh, I, I understood so the way they were trying to, you know, make us into money makers well, for in, them. Into what their image, their of image of what it was. was. And but, they yeah. could tell you to, to, to change your nose. Right. Uh, my name was Schultz. Yeah. And they said, that's too hard. That sounds like a German um, John Banner from uh, Hogan's Heroes. So you have to change it. And I was like, okay, how about Schuler? And they were like, great. They put my but card on. I'm sorry, oh but these girls God. now have names you can't even pronounce. Right, like exactly. Paretskovich. Yeah, right. Yeah, Come on. Right. Yeah. So you we had to have was, pretty names. Right. We had to have pretty names. Marushka was taken. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but my pop card had Schuler on it. My dad was like, oh, these are great. Um, you, 
is there's a typo on here though. Oh. <laughs> I said, oh daddy, they Please. changed my name because what happened was I went I went out into the world and I started studying acting, started to do comedy, and we created a comedy group called The Nerve. Love it. And it was the uh, nerve to be yourself. Yeah. And because yes. the 80s yuppies were happening with the power yep. ties yep. and oh, the yeah. briefcases. Yeah. And my girl call your girl. So I was in charge of the costume. So I went into the thrift shop and I opened all the business suits. I said, corporate America, you're going. Down. Here we come. Yeah. Here so we come, corporate felt, America, like you've I, never seen it. Right. So <laughs> we did four business suits. Then there was somebody down on the Lower East Side that was a costumer. And I had her build a giant business suit that we all popped out of like an egg. Yes. Get no stress. Job, right? ah! Like the Lady Gaga thing where they she came out, there get was, out. I'm telling yes, you, she was it, ahead of time. In like 82 that. or something. So, Unbelievable. Um, and it was like my girl call your girl. We were all robots. And one of the guys from the, from the group was in the audience serving. And um, nobody knew he was in the group. And I came out with a whistle and I said, we need somebody to dress for success. <laughs> <laughs> get out there and find me a recruit. So we dragged him on stage. He had Velcro clothes on. I ripped <laughs> Oh, I, love, I love the whole. I had a USDA stamp. I stamped his yes. ass. He was okay. <laughs> yeah. With, and and we started to dress him in a business suit. And as we put all the different pieces on him, he became more robotic. Oh my oh, God. That's yeah. And then brilliant. This is genius. Yeah. yeah. Right. Really. So then we, we broke down four different things, four ways. We were four, three guys and me. So we did a magic trick four ways. We, you know, somebody had a can of Coke, somebody uh, opened it. I drank it. Somebody belt. Assembly yeah. line. Yeah. It was the, assembly the assembly line. line. Yeah. Yeah. And then we sang a song about, Oh my yeah, God. Uh, I, I have the nerve. I need the nerve. Uh, the nerve, the nerve, the nerve. And so, and it was always the cure, the romantic Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so right. The nerve the was nerve. funny because it was like the nerve, had the nerve to, you know, to think that I couldn't be myself. But um, everyone was saying, oh, I, I, I identify with People that. People identify. Yeah, I absolutely. see myself on the train because yeah. I was like, my favorite day is a Monday. My favorite day is a Monday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can go to work. I ended up a friend. Oh, this was, that was so brilliant. Right. Yeah. So uh, applicable and right. to the time. And right. it shows how you can use your art to fight back. Right, right. and fight back. Yeah, and fight so, back. don't you know, somebody came back, oh, I'm crying about four years into it, and said, you should plus size model. And I said, you should write for my act. <laughs> <laughs> because I am not going to go down that road again. I'm not going down the right. rejection yeah. and I yeah. can't be who I want to be. And they were like, no, no, no. There's this whole thing coming up. It was the movement. Yeah, the double the digit. Yeah, you yeah. know, so I said, as long as I don't have to go on a diet and be something that I'm not. Mm -hmm. So I went over to Ford and well, I went over to plus and then I went to Ford, but plus models was, was the secondary tier that you graduated to Ford right. with. But when I was over there getting signed, the woman said, you know, um, how come you haven't been here before? I said, I was. I was downstairs. You know, more on downstairs. I Show me the little 70 pounds. Right. Wow. And because they didn't a like. A 70 pound difference between floors. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I like that, Tim. Oh, it's a new diet. And it My was God. a whole different planet. I love it. You know? right. Different planet. But it was called special sizes in those days. So oh, we, my yes. God. Special, special sizes. sizes. And the was industry real still. Sizes. Still was refers to it as special. Yeah, sizes. they they oh, they man. absolutely and do. that's petite sand plus. So one um, of the things that I think we really have to bring out, you did have that classic face, and I, you worked with my husband Alan Kaplan. Right? You did yes. the Avenue. He was one of the first photographers to start so shooting. Really plus treat size, us like we were icons. Right, plus size yeah. women. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. When it first started, I remember even in my agency, they were calling it large size models. Right, large well, size. that did not fly. Then it became plus size. What was always an enigma to me, and I do go back and forth about this, you that you have that classically standard model face. Right. That's why they told you when you came into Ford, lose 70 pounds. If you're a stick, time. that face will work all the time. I every girl that was a plus size, she didn't none of them look like real girls. They all look like versions of the size twos. Isn't that you had it right? You had a they look they wanted like to that. make me into the plus size Kim right. Alexis. Right. No, Kim well, Alexis, one of, absolutely. They said one of the, I look like Kim Alexis. One of the things that you said was um that to look like yourself and there the whole thing with the modeling industry at that time was not to look like yourself it was to look like what they wanted you to look like right. and that yeah. that it affected everything. that created so much anorexia oh my god heroin yeah. addiction yeah. 
I mean, all of these <laughs> dangerous things for these Diet young pills. girls that didn't know any better. Okay, but we're all saying, we keep saying we're blaming the model agencies. I have a bone to pick about that. It's the it's the women. Women perpetuate it. Mm -hmm. they, Catherine's a beautiful, bright, incredible mm -hmm. woman. I'm a woman, all right? We support other women. At that time, the crazies in our industry right. that were obsessed with mm -hmm. like the boy bodies, and I still have an issue with that because I still think it's out there. I don't oh, want to yeah. see a garment on a kid that's 12 years old yeah. with a boy body. Right. What does that got right. to do with me? And like a magazine like Harper's Bazaar, it should be for my age group, you're, you and I. Right. But do you want to see it on a on a child on a child's body, and that's still Not going on? And the women, yeah. I'm sorry, and, the women perpetuate it. And the good it. thing is, well, I used to do <laughs> runway shows, I'm all fired up. Yeah, right? Oh, I used fired to do up. runway shows, and I was the only plus size model on the runway. So mm -hmm. when Token. I got out there, yeah, yeah, the the token. Token. Right. But when I got out there, I was getting standing ovations. I was going to say people pumping their fists in the air, and the girls backstage were going, "What were you doing out there, cartwheels?" And I was right. like, "No, no I'm being myself." They just saw mm -hmm. themselves for the first right. time. I was just I love, say I love because that. they could right. you represented right. Right. everyone more women than what those little stick figures do exactly but the point is there was one of you and the rest of Thank them you. and yeah, really right. to to this day i'm sorry we still have not come that far um there's a yeah. very famous plus size model um now what is her name you know Ashley who, Graham? Uh, there's ashley graham right. and there's one other one you know that you well, see all the that you see all the time and they are in the runway shows what the hell happened to everybody else Where's the real girl yeah, bodies? It's true. Mm -hmm. it's I'm true. a real girl body. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And that's an Curves. A10. That's right. an A10. Right. So right. that's a, 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 a wasteland, no pun intended. Yeah. But because you're <laughs> not you're not a two <laughs> four was... or you're not at fourteen sixteen. Because we all had I'm to be far size fed. fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a you're, far yeah, fed you're girl. a real woman. You've got curves right. and mm -hmm. uh some meat on your bones, and they don't know what to do with you. Because right. yeah. that of that size eight was usually the fit model. Right. Type. You know, mm -hmm. but you didn't see that on the runway. You saw either super skinny Thank or you. like a size 14. Thank but you. we couldn't be anything more than a 14. I mean, we got measured. We yeah. My 43 inch hip had to be a 43 inch hip because yeah. that was um, based on the sample sizes. Uh -huh. And that is that that's the way the industry works. So you have to maintain. Months, yeah. And I'm, I'm a fit model. Advance. Right. Uh -huh. I have to maintain. Right. But it is. I have to. Oh, this is all coming out today. Catherine. <laughs> Bring, it. Me. Bring it. Bring it. I'm flinging that. it. Um. You know, when a client now at my agency, if a client wants to measure you when you're coming up there to do a booking for them, they have to let the agency know ahead of time. They just can't come at you with the tape measure anymore. Mm. And I, I do oh, like that changed. because let's just say you're out at Pangea the night before. You had too much to eat, two pieces of birthday yeah. cake and two cocktails. You're going to measure a little bigger. So at least this way it gives you. But you know what? I still hate being measured. It's like bullshit. I when I work with my clients clients i am the average american eight i don't fit it to wendy's body i fit uh -huh. it i'm smart enough to know how the fabric's going to drape, drape and you understand mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. that it shouldn't be fit to me i it should be based on my feedback the way it looks on me and my comments on how it should be tweaked that's just my opinion right and i mean that's I the agree. fit the fit industry right and you know that is a real that's a real woman those are going to be worn by real people so they need to know there's you know mm -hmm. movability wearability right. would you buy With it is it scratchy arms. is it yeah what do we need to change about it because that's why a lot of fit models go and get pattern and draping classes at fit yeah. mm -hmm. because they they can really inform the people because and now it it's there's so much fast fashion that making yeah, those really. thousands and thousands of units that are only mm -hmm. going to wind up in sample sales and landfills are, you know. Oh, wait, wait, you go, wait, wait, you need back to I love that. Sample sales and landfills. That's the title of your book. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. No, that is, like, so genius. You heard it right here. Catherine Schuler said it. She owns it. Okay, she owns it. That's <laughs> freaking genius. That. Right. But it's true because now I've not only added, I've had diversity, inclusivity. Right. Now, with my event production business, it's accessibility because the, um, the industry became so exclusive, you could couldn't get into the shows. Mm -hmm. right. Used to be you'd show up at the tents and say, "Hi, you know, I I'm an FIT or I'm a model, and here's a little, you know, you can SRO it." 
But now you have to have a QR code and all that. And mm-hmm. it's so exclusive and it's so um, uh, influencers. And yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. really, right. it's not buyers and it's not the press. It's, right. you know, That's it's celebrities I mean. in the I front row. I don't get the point of it. Right. <laughs> What's the new velvet rope? It's yeah. like, studio, this is the new Velvet Rope. The QR code is right. the new Velvet Rope. My God, we're really coming up with these great sayings. <laughs> right, right? We're like Soundbite Central here. <laughs> Oh my God. But the thing is, is I want to do now, I added sustainability into my whole mix. So I want to do for Mother Nature what I did for the plus. I love it. Yeah. So that's, right. that's the new trend is, you know, what you can do for the planet and mm-hmm. for the climate, because we have 10 years, people, sustainable development goals. So I've been working more with sustainability and um, trying to tell the manufacturers about shape. And um, 58% of all the garments that are returned are because of fit. And wow. um, there's no um, there's no real standard in this in, in, in the world. Well, I can the tell you of what's happened the in the fit industry. They hire girls like me. Th- I have 30 years fit experience. Right. And it doesn't matter if you sell to younger customers or older customers. I can tell you how to make your clothes fit. Right. I go up on jobs and they have me put a sample on and I give them my expertise, right. And the feedback, what my agency has told me sometimes Wendy, they don't want all that feedback. They want a girl, the girl, they ask for the girl, the body, the the body to stand there with the thing on and say, it's It's too tight or it's okay. Where Wendy will say, well, the neckline is showing an right. inch too much cleavage. Let's raise it. Your cross shoulder yeah. needs to be 15 and a Give half Give me that sloper. Right, on a- right. Yeah. Give me that sloper. Uh, your sleeve length, right. 23 and a half inches. Right. I know those numbers. And you brought up sustainability. You know how fabric reacts. I do too. We mm-hmm. had to. Right. They don't care about that. They don't care. You're saying this stuff doesn't fit. It they ends up to. in landfill. Yeah, they need to because wow. they, they have to do their homework. And right. that's what happened when the industry started changing to be more accepting. And plus, they were all over the map with that. They didn't know what a 14 was, 14 W. What is a what W is, mean? Yeah. Wide? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it stands for woman. And it's two inches different fit everywhere. Two inches proportional. That's important, that two inches. And that's important. And a 14 W is an 18 straight size. So I tell people if they want to get into plus sizes maybe do a few extended sizes so that then you can capture those people who don't want to go into the plus size department kicking right. and screaming Smart. but mm-hmm. will stay in the missy Smart. department but a 14w is an 18 straight size and mm-hmm. they were like okay good we can do that because i went up to donna karen when she was just starting out and she was only going up to size 12 and i wrote a pamphlet called lipstick always fits because i would go into <laughs> i would go Love into this. a department store and say you know do you have anything in a size 14 and they were like no and i was like okay i got the money here so what are we doing people so i went to a luncheon and i saw donna karen and i said you should really do plus sizes you should really consider doing plus sizes and she said i do i go up to a 14 and i was like Uh, and then i then she opened all those little boutiques over in hong kong she would rather see her clothes on a small asian Mm -hmm. you know petite woman than bastardize her brand by putting it on to plus size women brand bastardization God damn. damn it. We need a glossary <laughs> for today. I know. But you really are hitting the nail on the right. head. Absolutely. And they don't want to see it. And then when the it. internet hit, they took all the departments out. Saks yeah. closed Salon yep. Z. Closed wow. Salon Z. I opened it with Pauline Trigere, with David Dart, with Givenchy. Remember with remember David Dart. Yes. Wow. What happened to David Dart? Right. I mean, right. Um, Tadashi, all those great brands. And they thought that we were going to have that same kind of spending power. But the best boutique was the Forgotten Woman. Nancy Rabin oh my God, knew what the <laughs> heck yes. she was doing. Yes. She was a go-getter. Yeah. She had this beautiful that. store on Rockefeller Center. I remember the store. I was like... And we had, and we, had, I mean, Roseanne Barr was in there. Everybody was in there buying, and it was a, it was a salad days for that. And um, she would go to Givenchy, she would go to Oscar de la Renta, and say, "Make me a hundred garments." And they would turn the machines on for her because she had twenty two stores, mm-hmm. so she had enough orders to 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 validate that. And that was the best time in the it was it was the wow. heyday. The best time. Wow. But, I still have garments from those days that I wear. Uh-huh. Right. But okay, talk about cost per wearing. Yeah. Let's think about what's going on now. Why? Why is why did this all come to a crashing uh, exactly. halt? You t- you're the expert. I want to hear it from your 
Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of different factors. Yeah, I would I imagine. Think, yeah, and I think the the internet is a blessing and a curse. Yeah, I yeah. Agree. Because I think it has given us uh, a panoply of different types of women and different types of images that we can uh, uh, kind of um, associate with and identify with. But it's kind of backfired too because there's this angry aspect to um the industry where they they get so caught up in well why don't you go up to a size 28 why don't you go up to a size right. 32 right. Right. you know how much where more it work end? it is and i'm right. an, i'm sorry i have to tamper my message because it's not come on girls get as big as you want because we have clothes for you i have a, a charity for women with diabetes it's right. diabetic mm -hmm. yeah, diabetic diva 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 image Love and it. style advisor that yeah. first of of all that's genius and second of all you took me to where i wanted to go next with you right how big is big and how unhealthy is to be that big we have to talk about that yeah and i i mean i address that because 80 percent of women living with diabetes are plus size and wow. that was a good i i tried to do eating disorders but it, i didn't have sympathy for the anorexic <laughs> population mm -hmm. <laughs> i have to admit you're... that i admit it i well, said have... it but i was just like please eat just eat and then, just you know, eat, so but, we don't yeah. have this discussion. Stop. <laughs> but then it was like, okay, so it's not really an eating disorder because I just feel I'm just larger than the average woman. Mm -hmm. I don't overeat. I just yeah, have a big body. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, I can lose weight, but I'm never going to get down to size two or four because mm -hmm. that's right. not my set point but with it's my about body. being it's happy about with your body and without you, being right. obesity is a whole other thing, whole other thing. and, and then, you have to know more yeah. than just your size right. and your weight you have to know your a1c you have to know your your mm -hmm. um your gl glucose you have to know all the 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 deeper numbers and a lot i mean 84 million people in america are pre-diabetic and only yeah, five percent know it five percent mm -hmm. and there are 24 million diabetics in america so uh, and there are 48 million in in india because they have a thrifty gene because it helps them during the the fast uh, and the during the famine and the droughts oh, they conserved calories wow. they started the evolutionary process of, of calorie conservation so it's a double whammy for them and they have all that rice and dal yeah, yeah, and yeah. lassi Mm -hmm. and sweets upon sweets and so the diabetes is rampant in india so i jumped on that bandwagon because divabetic was started by luther vandross's people and you're, you're yeah, kidding yeah. why why them well luther died of a diabetic stroke and my boss wow. was his personal assistant for 14 years and wow. didn't even realize max zadig did not even realize how bad luther's diabetes was because mm -hmm. it was a shameful thing right it was right. Right. remember Just when it, luther was heavy and skinny and and and, yeah. and, and it yeah. was heavy Luther and skinny Luther. Right. Mm -hmm. That was his diabetes being totally out of control. And um, nobody but knew But also that. going from being obese to skinny and uh, back to obese. Shock, that is, shocking to the that body. That is horrible yeah. on the horrible. body. It's, it's better so if unhealthy. You stay a little heavier and stay a little bit over balance, your set a point. little more right. balance. So the, it, it's exactly those highs and lows are so devastating on your body. So he had a diabetic stroke when he was 52. Oh my goodness. No, I'm 50. And then he wow. died when he was 52 from complications of that. But his mm -hmm. career was over because right. he had um, the stroke behind closed doors. Dance with my father was opening. He mm -hmm. was stressed out. He was renovating an apartment. Nobody had cell phones in those days. Right. And he had the stroke behind closed doors. And it's a brain attack. So it takes over your brain. So nobody, it just took out right. all of his functions. Mm -hmm. and so, he was, yeah, yeah. so he was in there in a coma and they found him. And so Max said, coma. no one is going to find out about diabetes diabetes the way I did in the ICU of a hospital right. for right. somebody I care about for 15 years. So he created Divabetic. So we went to see um, mm -hmm. Patty LaBelle was singing at uh, Luther's Tribute. And he said, she's not a diabetic. She's a Divabetic. And it was like, ah. The oh, 80s are in love it. D yeah. for there you go, Diva Bedic. So Diva Bedic was born and I joined it because I was looking for a platform. I wanted to tamper my message because I'm in the plus enough club. And I, you know, a lot of people get hate mail and whatever, but I'm informed about it. I right. think the hate stuff comes up 
when um you know there i'm fine yeah well i was gonna say know, that comes yeah, from like, insecurity right, right. Or, what kinds of things do they write do they, yeah, they attack just, you yeah no they don't attack me because i hit them back with those kind of facts right. you know i said you can you can be a, a size 26 at at age 26 now but let me tell you when you're my age yeah, your knees tall, are going to give out yeah, your yeah, back yeah. is going to give out yeah. your pancreas your is going to give out all that, all your i want to stay active i want to be on a on a podcast a wonderful <laughs> podcast like this <laughs> Mm -hmm. I want to go around the city. I want to stay out till three o'clock in the morning, like I did last night, and Yay, not pay for too. it the next day. <laughs> right, right? Me too. And so I have to stay healthy. So yeah, I had to adjust to exactly. a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. So it's all a choice. How I mean, do you get that message, though? Because uh, you mentioned getting hate mail. How do you get? people to accept that message you go to any mall in this country and you know this tip uh -huh. yeah. where you're from in the country the yeah. heartland yeah people are obese yeah mm -hmm. how do you yeah. how do you get them to accept <coughs> to what you're saying and to change right. you're yeah. right they're going to die that's early a, that's well, we, we do an event called make over your diabetes and i don't care Tell us about that event. what yeah. kind of woman you are <laughs> You love fashion, you love makeup, and you love hair. Mm -hmm. Even if you're running around in a t-shirt, if somebody makes you over right. and does yeah. something to you, so we have a beauty bar, we have a, a, a hair salon, we have safe manicures and pedicures, we have how to eat well, how to exercise well. And it's called the it's a makeover maze. So you go through the maze. I love oh, that. You that's learn fabulous. about um, you learn about glam more, fear less from me, and that's fashion and how fashion is a motivating force. Then you go to grab green and go, and that's nutrition. And I have Aida Romaine, who's that's this great. drag queen who says, "What is her name?" Aida, Aida Romaine. Aida Aida Aida. Romaine. <laughs> <laughs> so she's this giant that. drag queen and my students at FIT designed the outfit. She says she has lettuce heads on her bustier and a tiara that says I eat a remain. And she's like, I eat a remain, you eat a remain. We all eat a remain. <laughs> <laughs> eat a remain together. <laughs> so Aida is the mascot for Grab Green and Go. She Jackson Sturkey, who we saw performing last night created the Grab Green and Go song for her. So she sings Grab Green and Go. And then you go to tw uh, Twist and Shout, which is um, exercise. Of course, and, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. So we get everybody up on their feet and moving. And, and you only have to do 30 minutes of exercise a day to impact your diabetes 58%. I was That's just going to say, I would say, not I would much. care to um, theorize that most people who are in this situation don't know how simple it could be right. to change their direction right. and their health. Right. And and it's just a matter of choice and being a better eater, not a perfect eater. You right. don't have to just really make this change this and make that change, change right. and do that. How and do you then, get your program out there then? To Tim's point, that's a good good point. How do you yeah. get it out there? So I did a program uh, called Curventures. And um, I, I, I love I this. Love these. <laughs> this. I'm going to have her name things I know. for me. That's I'm a titler. I should have worked on Madison <laughs> Avenue. I swear a to God. Titler. I love that. <laughs> so um, we created this program, uh, and uh, I said to, to Max, I'll give you a boost because I, I had met him at uh, a pageant, and I said, I want to work with Diva Bedic somehow. So don't you know, we got discovered by Novo Nordisk, which is a big insulin pharmaceutical. Oh, yeah, of course. And yeah, we I got $2.5 million worth of funding right then and there yes. for six years. So we took the nice. Make Over Your Diabetes around the country, and we did uh, a broomstick bash for Halloween. We do the Easter parade, anything that's candy-centric or, you know, how to, Candy-centric. You know, right. You yeah. know, all those sugar. <laughs> I mean, sugar is the biggest addiction in, it the, is. in the country. Yeah. Sugar yeah. is the biggest addiction and once you know that they have you with a gun to your head you can unplug the matrix and right. say you're not doing that to me right. right and this is how you do it because you don't stay addicted mm -hmm. and you can't i'm sorry corporate america cannot have my palate remember what i did with a comedy group yeah yeah, yeah there you go not have my yes. health so it's the sick care not the health care so we can go into that for days but we have a great and it's not your grandmother's diabetes so we're no, not there. Which the used to be called sugar diabetes. Yes. Right, sugar yeah. diabetes. Sugar right. diabetes, exactly. This is adult onset diabetes. It's, a, it's, mm -hmm. it's type 1, type 2, yeah. pre-diabetes. It's for people yeah. living with, affected by, or at risk of diabetes. And that's everyone. We should all eat like we're going to get diabetes. And, and also the other thing with diabetes is that it's the silent killer. I mean, you can yeah, have right. it and not even know it. Oh, yeah. Not even realize. Oh, yeah. And it can, be, it can go unchecked. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have a stroke. Right. And, you know, so also I had a stroke 
uh, 10 years ago, 11 Get years out. ago. Oh my yeah. Get out. But it wasn't from diabetes. It was because I had um, a hole in my heart and um, oh, I, it just, it, I, I it had just driven a- down to do a diabetic event and I had a DVT in my leg and it went through the holes in oh my heart. My- oh my God. And I got right. straight. Yeah. So I, lo- I had to learn to walk again. So oh I started goodness. to do programs on that. I, I did the Go Red because it was, I had holes in my heart. So was um, this a genetic thing that you just it was all genetic and I was no a one ever picked, they, nobody nope. ever picked nope. it something I had a factor wow. five light and clot and I had a uh a factor five light and I had a clotting gene. I mean oh, it was like goodness. I was a trifecta waiting to in and to thank implode. God right. I was on my way to a diabetic event, the final diabetic event on World Diabetes Day when I had my stroke. <gasps> so I have the story of all stories. I mean and I'm like the poster child yeah, you're, of diabetic it, it, it now. Really so is. that's what I do and we go around and do programming and we had a wonderful six years the f- big pharma is um yeah. they're not really interested in in um in eradicating why, why would rights. why would they want to eradicate it's their bread and butter, their bread no, and butter. i have a question for you profitable. being that you brought that up and the profitability of the big pharma how much of people getting diabetic is connected do you think to their economic group that's a good question because mm. we do a lot of work with fast the African American yeah, yeah. um, community, oh, yeah. the Hispanic community, and that's why we educate in those communities because right. it seems like that's uh, the food desert. You know, we've yeah, heard right. about mm-hmm. the food desert. Um, so that gives me a whole nother aspect of um, uh, cause that I can I can. How work do you with. get around the fact that if you go into a lot of those neighborhoods, and this includes up at 125th Street, yeah. one oh, fast I'm, food. I'm up at 172nd. Right, yeah. you see it, you food. certainly yeah. see it up by, oh, yeah. by you. Yeah. Heavily I can salted. walk, I can go to yeah. a McDonald's, the same amount of blocks, right. either direction. Right, There's right. There's a McDonald's. And that's, to me, that's wrong. <clears throat> yeah. How do, how do we get that? Genocide. It's, it, it, it's, it's genocide. genocide. And I feel groups of people are being targeted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yes, we're absolutely. smart. How do we stop this from happening? And well, Again, it's a corporate America. Right. And yep. so that's yep. why the programming is so important that we do. And, um, you know, we have a podcast. We have, uh, we do uh, makeover events. I so love it. it just, you a know, it gets uh-huh. that out there. And people have aha moments. They're like, oh, oh I didn't sure. know. I didn't know. But it's not a reason to beat yourself up. You have diabetes. It doesn't have you. Be a diva yep. about your diabetes. Treat your diabetes like it's something you have. It's a lifestyle disease. It is. Mm-hmm. It so is. never leave the house without doing your makeup, your hair, putting on a great outfit. Right. Because there are never studies do. that exactly. <laughs> and you know, you probably eat well. You I probably don't. get a little exercise in, and more that, than a, more than a little four times a week since some twenty seven years go. of age, mm-hmm. one and way or the other. Just, but I work at it right, and it becomes a habit. So you know, it takes. Uh, some time to incorporate right. all that, but the payoff it's, is huge. Right, the payoff absolutely. is really worth it. So we um and you know everybody loves fashion and it's like yeah. tonic water. It just goes with everything and yeah. it really <laughs> lightens the you know it lightens mm-hmm. the burden of the message. You know because I'm not there admonishing. You know take your insulin. Right. Exactly. No, we're like or shaming. Shaming. Or shaming. Right. Exactly. Shaming. You're trying to right. shame. Blame. Trying to- Trying right. to instruct people on how they can right. make the changes, and so we use a lot of the the you know R and B stuff that Luther did dancing. I love it. So there's a whole message there. So Excellent. it's been a great. I'm, I was looking for because the business is, was so good to me. I wanted to give back, and right. I found right. Divabetic, and I have never looked back. And it just <sighs> you don't this. throw the baby out with the bath. You Absolutely, just add yeah. your bath water because after I didn't have my contract renewed at Ford in '93, I went back to school and became an image consultant at Parsons. So I now love this. I became mm-hmm. a, a you're, you're image using consultant. everything that you right. are I, and your whole entire for background. plus size women. Absolutely. For plus size women, I became a plus size you know image consultant. You are watching if these walls could talk with your host Wendy Stewart Hello. and Tim Moss and our just amazing, amazing. guest who is changing <laughs> lives in yes. this world for the better. The fabulous and glorious Catherine Schuler. Yes, Yay! and today is just filled <laughs> with information about it's, fashion and eating and corporate America and like all the things that Jim and I love to do. I'm yes. so I'm so impressed with you and Aww. the trajectory of your life and just how you 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 continue to serve. Right. Almost yeah. serve mankind yes. right. from 
your experiences in mind. Yeah, and I want to be the person I wish I had met when I first moved to New York. I, I read yeah. that you yeah, did, so that's you my said mantra. That. That's my mantra. And include yourself because everyone's like, Oh, Miss Schuler, how'd you do it? And I said, I don't know, just show up. Something yeah, will just happen. show up. Just show up. Like, oh my god, we totally believe happen. that. Yeah, or that's ninety percent. The new mantra right I've I've learned, and I learned this from the golden case. They I learned they said so many things. They're like you, they have all these sayings. <laughs> all right. All you care about is the yes. You just ignore the no. Yeah. And that I have found to be so true. You just want to surround yourself with the yes and don't deal with the no. Okay. And that is the God's honest it's truth. Now, with everything we've talked about, I know you're now um, addressing that gender neutral wear mm -hmm. more fa and, and yeah. fashion yeah. fluidity. One of the things that has bothered me um, about the way the fashion industry has handled transgender, I think it was like four or five years ago, Barney's did a whole campaign. Maybe it was six years mm -hmm. ago. They're the most gorgeous transgender couples mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And they completely romanticized and glorified. And everybody, of course, was gorgeous, modelly looking. They mm -hmm. all look fabulous in the clothes. It pissed me off. I'll tell mm -hmm. you why. I knew people that were transitioning and it was tough. And yes. they were, right. Barney's was just on, I felt like, again, object. Um, look, objectivity. Look at, look at us. Right. Look at, look at, look at, fantasy. Yeah. Thank you. Look yeah. at how cool we are. <laughs> yeah. We're embracing the t transgender community. I, there's got to be a better way to do that. So I want to talk to you about your gender neutral wear. Yeah, that's part of the diversity that I I, I feel that, like, you know, fashion is for everyone. And right. um, there are, and the thing is, is with the um, ob objectification of uh, fashion, it got to be too sexy for a while. Mm -hmm. And I really loved the fact that the gender neutral had that very elegant and yeah. very across the board kind beautiful. of appeal. Beautiful so, fabrics, beautiful draping, right. I agree. So right. that that appealed to me. And then I started to say, hmm, uh, there are people transitioning and yeah. it's not just about drag because I feel sometimes the drag thing can be a little, you know, it's a little prejudicial. I think, you know, that, that yeah. whole thing about drag Drag and in in almost like trashy trampy mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. It is, all, but again, that's, funny, that's something but... I know a lot about, right. and it's totally different yeah. than yeah. than transitioning. But and I, the, anyone but drag, that. drag, yeah. yes, but it, they're in the same vein. But and drag, a lot of people, drag right. is is um, Glam, it, yeah. it's very popular now. Yeah, yeah. right. It's become yeah. very popular. Right, because of RuPaul's whereas, Drag Race. Right, right. 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 Whereas, whereas trans, whereas trans is a, an identity. Yeah, it, yeah it, exactly. It, it's not you a know? sexual thing. It's a, it's a right. gender And many of my identity. transgender friends, especially the ones that transitioned over 50, they don't like drag even a little bit yeah. now. And I yeah. defend it because I, I think drag yeah. is an incredible creative um, art form. Art form. Yeah. It really is. And I love the humor. I love the costuming, the clothing and everything. It is a totally different thing mm -hmm. than, than transgender. Now, and I and should... society doesn't get that. Right. Yeah. Now, I need to introduce you to, or do you know um, Rob Smith from yeah. the Fluid Project? Fluid Project. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say you need yep. to know him. Yeah. Because yep. I, I, I did a, I did a, I do the Dean's Forum at FIT. So every year they have a, a different topic, adaptive clothing, plus sizes, uh, the business of uh, fashion is fluid. So mm -hmm. I got to know the fluid project and I had Preston on the, on the board. Yeah, because they have all gender fluid. Right. And I, you know, and I, 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 I love the, I, it, it, a lot of the, the gender fluid stuff is, it looks really great on many different types. As of, it should. Yes. Really as, right. as it should. Petite, right? older and that's what i love is like all ages sizes the shapes, versatility right. Every, Every, everybody can instances. feel yeah. good yeah dressing exactly. up so, diversity yeah. oh, and, oh, <laughs> oh my god being this <laughs> is happening i'm channeling Catherine schuler oh my god versatility and diversity diversity i love it channel mortality versatility versatility <laughs> so um i think that you know the gender uh, fluidity now is a very popular way to dress because I think it's a backlash against too sexy. And I also did a modest wear uh, uh, um, uh, panel for Dean's Forum, and modest, modest wear, wear is another. It's it it comes from like Muslim, but it's not because um it's a it's a choice that you don't want to overexpose your body. Um, yeah. and it don't, you don't modest have to have wear. burkas and veils, right. but it's just you know you don't have 
every you know body part hanging out. Mm -hmm. I work with the religious community. Mm -hmm. See that neck drop on your garment? Mm -hmm. All of the neck drops that I make for them is, is that neck drop. That's yeah, probably as to yours. The, oh, forget about mine. But yeah. that neck drop, like for somebody that is not religious, they mm -hmm. would. I'm just going to touch you for a minute. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. would come down like that. It might be three and a half inches. Right. That's a higher neckline, and I have to come in closer here, and I have to have the arm coverage. Arms coverage. And yeah. um. The way and often we reinterpret Chanel, but I have to reinterpret it yes. for the religious community. But they love the spot fashion. On. They yeah, they love the right, fashion but spot on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not just burkas and moos right. and you know, throw throw a sheet on. Uh -uh. Right. It's right. Really Designer. fashionable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And take a Chanel and make it make it modest. And it's a four hundred and seventy six million dollar yeah, business. Girl, you mm -hmm. hit the nail on the a, head a with that. Million dollar business. It's like ridiculous. And so um that's what I think uh is uh, very interesting because I'm combining all the modest wear with the gender fluidity so and, nice. you know, just, um, you know, providing I, a platform for, for people to look good, no I, matter what their I persuasion is. I love the creative imagination that you have and being able to take these um, negative things and right. Make them positive. Mm -hmm. right. Make it come out with right. something positive and a good and, and something that will help people. Right now, we have a few. Oh, we have um, some comments. We love. Comments. We have some comments. Thank you, from everybody. People watching. <laughs> oh, we good love the comments. comments. Look at we're stirring up. The Joe pot. Preston says, "Bravo, you all look amazing." Oh, thank you, Joe. That's all that oh, really matters. God. There's Lori Kaplan. Lori Kaplan. Anyway, Lori, Lori's you know a bra Lori. fitter. She oh, is. She is. You are the, the what fairy godmother. What mm -hmm. are you? Mm -hmm. fairy, passion fairy godmother. Fashion, fashion fairy yeah, godmother. Let's talk about she what Lori is, does. She I love is it. the fairy bra mother or fairy she godmother uh, oh, for I bra like tender. Fairy, fairy bra, bra mother. mother. She does yes. bra tenders. Yes, bra tenders. Oh, bra tenders. Yes, I love she you, Lori. Oh, love you, Lori. Lori. You've been doing that for a long time, yeah. girl. And she, yeah, Richard Skipper says, uh, "Bring on Lori Kaplan. She's the expert." Yes, I'm like boss. Yes. Apollo Apollo Cabrera says, "Yes." Yes. I would oh. say that shapewear is really good shapewear, good bras. I always tell the plus size women, you know, get a good bra before you go into the store and try anything on because it makes such a difference. But here's the thing, okay, because I fit bras also. Macy's was the last of the bra departments, okay, where you used to be able to go in there and They're the fitting. women were experts. Yeah. I did clinics in Macy's on how to fit bras. Nobody's doing that. I mean, Lori does oh, it. Lori Kaplan. Lori, Lori does she it. Has, she has right. this natural ability that yeah. she can, and Lori she claims that like 89 to 90% of women have, have the wrong size bras. 86% of, right. of women have the wrong size mm -hmm. bras. But there's yeah. not more Lori Kaplan's you. out there. Right. Yeah. And right. you go into Macy's now, and it is like Death Valley days. The ladies that are helping you have no idea. Oh, they'll be in pots it. and pans one day and drive the next. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, it's all the same. It's a like, pot, a pan, a bra. Just, yeah. the clerk, just here's, it up. You yeah, know. here's a waffle iron. Will that fit? Oh, no. <laughs> that was yesterday. I was in the wrong department. Sorry. I, I, I got my departments confused. But it's true because I used to do training in all the department stores, you know, For dealers. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I used to, I have a, a, a company. Um, called Runway the Real Way, and I created Shape Shopping with Figure and Fit. Because you ask a plus-size woman what shape she is, she says big. I said, that's mm -hmm. a judgment. <laughs> right. It's not a right, shape. Right, right. So the first thing you have to get right is the shape of the garment. So you're shaped a certain way, and I used to have to tell the manufacturers, we're not all blobs. We're not all ovals. Mm -hmm. We are big eyeglasses. We're big Same. inverted yeah, triangles. Right. So I took everything I learned in the image department at Parsons and just just yeah, made it a little bigger. Yeah. Love so, um, out there. And so shape shopping with figure and fit. I am not only the fashion fairy godmother, but the shape shopping queen. And I believe that, that, that good undergarments are the foundation of style. No pun mm -hmm. intended, but they are truly the oh, foundation yeah. of style. Yeah. And if you've got a good bra, it's not only better for your health, your back, uh, and the way your, your garments back, fit. That's right. You know? yeah. So be and sure I, it's not bartenders. It's <laughs> bra tenders. tenders. And the, Go to bra tenders. Lori Kaplan will help you out. And she where is bra up. tenders? Let's bra do a little... tenders is Midtown. It's um, okay. it's like forty eight in the. Uh, uh, I can't think of the building that it's in. Oh my God. Midtown go in the forties. Bra, bra yeah. 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 There plug. used to be town shop. Let me up, just make sure. Yeah. They used to do fitting. Town fit shop up. used to do. Right. Fit, I mean, we've lost so much of that. Yeah. My biggest beef about the internet 
and I'm sure you're going to agree with me. My daughter buys really beautiful things on the internet for great prices, but for the most part, she buys things that are unstructured. So you can get away with that, but shopping and buying clothes on the internet, you have to buy sometimes three sizes. Yeah. To and me, that's bad for the uh, sustainability. It, 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 so right. You Thank you for bringing them and the you. carbon footprint that you're right. creating by having all of that transportation. Uh, it's a it, it's a nightmare. So I'm trying to take what I do in the department store, which increased sales by 107 percent every time I went and did figure and fit because I have a little wheel. And it's just very, very basic, you know, figure out your, your bust to your hips, your right. hips, to your waist to your hips and your bust to your hips. And it's all differentials. It's not measurements. I would have had you bring the wheel with you yeah. today. I'm sitting here. Yeah. I'm trying to do this. I know. <laughs> and I helped, know. you know, a lot figure. of people figure right. out what their figure type was because yeah. it's my mantra is know your shape, show your shape. I love it. I <laughs> love that. Yeah. Now, again, you have a very kind heart of trying yeah. to help others. Yes. Do you, where did that come from? Where did you learn to serve, to, to try to, yeah. Yeah, to serve? To I the think degree it came that from uh, my father uh, because he had a savings and loan association in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and he helped small businesses. Nice. And, uh, you know, I just, That's I saw person. him, you know, looking at, at uh, you know, and he'd go and ask people, you know, to pay up on their loans. And I'm like, daddy, don't go in there. Don't go. <laughs> yeah. But he was like, he had a way with people. And I said, he was a connector. That was mm -hmm. one thing he did. I used to tell my friends when, when my, when you come over to the house, my father is going to grill you mm -hmm. until he finds somebody that he knows who, you know, in common. Uh -huh. And so I've always had that ability to have that namaste, you know, yeah. where you see the spark yes. of yes. someone else yes. in you. And I'm always, I didn't ever feel like it was competition. I had my jobs, you had your jobs, mm -hmm. and I would just always hire myself. So that's why I wrote my own stuff and got myself out mm -hmm. there. And if somebody wasn't hiring me, I had something to do that day. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, and I, I wrote a book called The Ultimate Plus Size Modeling Guide, and nobody wanted to take it. So I self-published it. They did a job. They did a, a great favor to me you are so by doing that self yeah. self-motivated yeah. and like, what was that it was an absolute was um survival guide for me right. because i right. had it was that, your own survival bible because i had mode magazine which was the of the plus size vogue executed magazine I remember that. yeah so mode. i was i did mode on the road and i did all the programmings in the department store wow. and everyone would come up to me and say i want a plus size model and i'm like oh my god <laughs> oh my god but you, you know, know what this is what's blowing my mind i remember all these things they're gone yeah they're yeah, gone and they right, haven't been right. replaced what right. do you think is going to be next where yeah. are we going with this well unfortunately i got the prescriptions the <laughs> subscriptions up to four million with uh with the um with what you were doing department. right yeah right. I, what you were doing, i started right. the show with okay girls get your goodie bags get those magazines yeah. out see this uh subscription card right. that's your voting ballot I love that. I, I love want that. you to subscribe to Mode Magazine. And I will wait until you do because we're not starting the show until all those ballots are up. <laughs> <laughs> and she's tough. You don't want to mess I with her. So it. I got the subscriptions. Not me, but I was helping the department and to $4 million. So we figured everybody was, we went from 200000 when we first started to $4 million. The thing is, is that we had this tiny little investor up in Canada and they were getting crushed because every month we were in like more and more and more and more. So we found an investor called Berta. You know, remember Berta? I don't. Tell, they're tell the me. Yeah. They're German publishers. Oh, of course I know. Yeah, they they're, they're from, from Germany. Germany. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they were going to publish Mode Magazine. So they came over. The Germans Brilliant. are coming. The Germans are coming. Get your just <laughs> <Justin. laughs> And so we inked the deal on September 12th, 2001. That was when it was going to be inked and the buildings came down and the Germans went away and the, the magazine closed. And then right. the perception, well, Mademoiselle closed the same month. Yep. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. I, I love that. The magazine. whole thing is, is that there was an industry to support that. It wasn't right. that it went away, that all the women who were re reading the magazine right. went away. But there was it an was, industry there was to an support industry, that. And there still mm -hmm. is. But because the printing costs are so, so yeah. prohibitive now, there's not a great way to, you she know. She brought out a good the problem. Good the yeah. problem as I see it in most industries across the country and especially being an artist being an entertainer mm -hmm. is that the realness has been sucked out 
and it's all about money now. Right. Yep. Everything. I yep. agree too. And if you're Everything. making money and you have the numbers and you have the hits and numbers. you have the likes right. and all of the, it's all numbers, numbers, numbers. Yep. And there's no real we art or no there. real, yeah. re real uh, what substance. Yeah. Substance. Okay, let's even talk about the whole thing with influencers <laughs> from uh, a performance. Oh, per Do you know when I go up? <laughs> I need a drink. When I go, no, because this is <laughs> another pet peeve. Catherine brings out the <laughs> um, I'm an activist. What, I love why, it. Yeah, we all we all are. Why do they need to know when I go up on an audition how many followers I have? Yeah, me on Instagram as an actor. Right, I'm right. an actor. I did a really good audition. What it should not be contingent. I know on on how many That's followers, it. and good it's point. ridiculous, and it makes me so crazy. Yeah. And the amount of things I wouldn't mind if it was a rare thing. The amount of things even that I submit for that mm -hmm. want to know, you know, who are your followers, right? How yeah. many of your followers, where are, where are Twitter followers, Instagram followers? Oh, TikTok now. Give me a break. I can't do TikTok. It's too many things. Yeah. Too many things. We're all yeah. spending too much time yeah. doing, doing that and that, right. Doing stupid no, doing things. Doing that is right. what your Instead craft is. Right. craft. Right. And, right. And, right. And, and, and creating. Right. And, and, uh, and they uh, want I, that easy barometer. Yep. And, you know, yep. and it's like, yep. I'm, I, I liked it better when, you know, you could just have a natural way that your audience was building. Right. You built I, audience. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. You I built audience. for 75 people at my brunch every single mm -hmm. week. I love that. You know, Runway wow. the Railway at the hotel. Right. It was, you know, 475 right. people. It was a destination brunch and it was organic. People heard they about it. Word and of mouth, they, right. they came yeah. and it was like, oh, I heard so much Be good stuff. They about came this. because they wanted to. Right. right. And they enjoyed themselves. Right. Right. And they heard that thing. It was a, a, a you know, that's on the substance. break time. Yeah. And they wanted to check it out. So mm -hmm. nobody, you know, was influencing them. They weren't, you know, so that this, it, it, it's all of our it's pet a scary teams. time. I, so you scary know what, time. you guys, here's what I think. Like last night I came here, it was packed. Mm -hmm. He, I love Kobe. I'm like, can I help you with a flyer or anything? He sends me this little shrieky thing that nobody could even <laughs> read, and it was so tiny, and there wasn't like anything even on his page or whatever. Uh -huh. He packs that room here with his once a, once yeah. a month show. Why? Because word of mouth and still talent. and. Word of mouth for talent. If He's you got it, substance. Right, exactly. but it is up to us to try and override what is going Absolutely. on. He's doing it. Absolutely. Right. What he's producing here is incredible. It's not based on a flyer. Right. right. It's Absolutely. based on substance. And I think, you know what? We're mad as hell. We're, we're not, not going to take, take it, it anymore. anymore. <laughs> we're we're, we're, <laughs> we're talking. Because... They're not only talking, <laughs> yeah, right. they're demanding. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. You're watching If These Walls Could Talk with your host, Wendy Stewart and oh, Tim so Moss. Much more to... I don't know where we I are with know, time even. And, I don't have well, my phone today. I left my phone we're... plugged in at home. <laughs> where, where are we? <laughs> we're out of time. Oh, now, I need, I just but need a still five, got, We've still got a couple more things. Two more things. But our amazing guest, this incredible woman right here, the fabulous Catherine Schuler. Okay, the fabulous so, Catherine Schuler. But I want to ask yeah, also, ask, how do no. you, uh, how can people find out more about oh, you? Oh, right. You. So I have now morphed into <laughs> my secret identity. That's what good. She picked right up on it. That's I, where I was going. I <laughs> am Mrs. Captain America, in case you didn't know. My <laughs> husband. Yes. When um, is... I married uh, Mark Greenwald in 1992, and he was the number two guy at Marvel Comics. And I just had so much in common with him because he was doing his passion. I was doing my passion. Fashion and comics really yeah. worked Art, together comedy, so well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Comedy, the whole bit. Um, but he, because the, the, the industry, because of corporate America and Disney and all that, was going into a whole different mm -hmm. direction. He died of a broken heart. He oh. had a Monday morning heart attack because oh he was trying to save that company. Because I don't know if you know anything about the history of Marvel, mm. but there weren't films in those days. Right. It was that was bankrupt. Ron Perlman mm. bought it and had and he was a corporate raider and yep. he ran it into the ground. Thank you. And yep. um it was and then they they trashed it and told Mark to work on morale. And so he he worked on morale like you and I breathe. Right. So he was the if you think of the comic book world, he was the prankster. He was the the the, 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 the heart and soul of Marvel Comics. He and he wow. wrote um, Captain America longer than anyone. So wow. I um, am his legacy advocate. That is one of my other. I titles. love I love that. Yeah. Right. So right. He had a very significant career. He worked on over three thousand titles. He created the official handbook of the Marvel 
Universe, which is a Bible of all the characters. And he also wrote Captain America longer than anyone. So I created a combination of fashion and comics. Imagine if Comic-Con had a baby with Fashion Week. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So it's called Cosmoda. Oh, what a baby, baby. Cosmoda. Cosmoda is Cosmoda. Cosplay Runway. So I launched it in September um, after you know, a lot of like uh, other things I was event curating and fashion curating and directing. And I said, you know, it's time for me to get this. And now his Love fans it. are in their forties because they were reading mm -hmm. him when they were little boys and right. teenagers. Right. They all have successful businesses. So mm -hmm. one of I his fans this. came to me and said, I want to produce an event with you and I want it to yes. be fashion and comics. Fabulous. So Excellent. now I have a producer who used to be, and still is a huge fan of my husband. Of course. So it's a great, Great. Uh, it, it's a win-win it, for everybody. It's a win-win, yeah. but it's totally evolved. And so um, we launched at the Marriott Marquis, and we did um, Cosmoda. And now we're going to imagine, like, the panels at Comic-Con are about my husband. It's called mm -hmm. What Grew New and You Should Too. So his nickname oh, was Gru. Oh, Gru. What Gru mm -hmm. New? Because it was Mark Grunwald. Grunwald. So his, oh. his nickname was Gru. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and it's the key ingredient <laughs> to all so of what funny. I add. So I have a comic book contest challenge in his hometown of Oshkosh. And uh, wait, his hometown is not. Oshkosh, of course, it's Oshkosh. 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 He is. I mean, I was from Pittsburgh, but I mean, he's from the real heart of America. Oshkosh, Oshkosh Illinois, Oshkosh, is it? no, or, Wisconsin. Or, or Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. So I mean, there's yeah, a picture of him as a little line, yeah. boy in a Superman outfit in front of a white picket fence. That's Get all out, you need to know. And that that's is, all you need oh to my know. Gosh. Yeah. So I do that as an homage to him and everyone, I mean, the comic cosplay uh, industry, it's anime, it's mm -hmm. video games, it's movies it's now, huge. the movies have, have, have really taken over and everyone wants to walk around those lobbies. And I said, you know, we need a runway. So right. that's what oh, I created. God, and I so it. I, it was backstage and I, I'm talking to this guy who's Dr. Doom. He's got this beautiful costume and he's Dr. telling me, Doom. he's nerding out on how much he loves my husband. I said, I'm talking Aww. to Dr. Doom here. And so he said to me, Catherine, you did something for me that I was two, two bucket lists. You got me on a runway out of the lobby and onto the runway. And I booked a commercial right off of the yes, runway right. for Allied Chemical two bucket list items. So I think that that's really like where I'm going to go with that because I'm going to do Comic-Con and I'm going to do panels for about my husband at Comic-Cons. They have cosplay contests there. The winners get to yeah, be yeah. on my show. So mm -hmm. I do fashion weeks and um, CFDA actually started the thing called Connects and that's, that's kind of what I'm working with is mm -hmm. smaller fashion weeks around the United States and being that cosplay aspect of the-, the it's, it's amazing. So it's still much. paying it's it forward. Paying I'm it forward. Still, I'm still got a cut. We're going over time, yeah. but I have yeah, still go got a couple it, other yeah. things I want to know. One is, um, when you were younger, I just to share a couple of experiences, like maybe a, a one of your favorite modeling experiences oh, yeah, and one of your worst. worst. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> well, one one of the things we were talking about beforehand is like I um I used to do uh, music videos because mm -hmm. my friend oh, my worked God. in MTV and so uh, there was always some castings or whatever. So I was like, oh, I'm game for that. So I went to do um, at the Peppermint Lounge. We were talking about the things oh, that yeah. closed in, 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 Lounge. in, in uh, New York. Peppermint Lounge was in Midtown. Then it moved down to 17th Street and it was a big warehouse kind of place. And so we had uh, Beast of Burden. I got cast for the Beast of Burden. So Which I was, was Mick Jagger. Yeah, Mick from Jagger. And we don't need Midler. no Beast of the Burden. Bird. And yeah, Bette right. Midler. And yeah. Bette Midler. So they, and for so, um, and uh, Alan, um, oh, who did the uh, the rock and roll musical um, uh, movie, he was part of, and he was directing it. And it was a great, you know, it was a, a really interesting time because, uh, you know, it was about, talk about com com the commercialization of, of music. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at Mick Jagger. He's got this blue jacket with R-O-C-K on the lapel. <laughs> and I'm like, Mick, what are you right, wearing? Yeah, right. Why you are I, rock and roll. What are you? Uh, just don't, in case somebody uh, might have missed yeah. it. Exactly. Right. I, I don't know. They just put this on me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And so, um, you got a cigarette, right? Right. Oh, you got a thing. You got a yeah. joint. Like, I totally was not his type. Because I mean, he talk about like boy bodies. He really liked tall and skinny girls. So I was too curvy for him. So well, we and, just and talked. Jerry Hall was pregnant at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah, at that yeah. time, and then my friend, you know, who I kind of 
you know, was was hanging out with was super, super skinny. And of course, he was trapping her all over her, you know. Yeah. And you know, mm-hmm. I said, Oh my god, Mick, your wife's uptown pregnant and you're hitting on Deborah. You know, what <laughs> not is going surprising, on right? It was like, you know what the best part about artists is their art. Not who they I are. love that. <laughs> he was, that's a t-shirt. We're going to make oh, a fortune here God. selling so those t-shirts. t-shirts. Right. Yeah. So I, um, you know, we were cry. We had to cry. So I was over there going, you mind me, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so he cracked up. I mean, I really kind of got it. I, he had a good sense of humor. And then AIDS was just happening. And he said, some Japanese guy asked me about AIDS. Probably wants to freaking merchandising rights. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. So it was, you know, those, those kind of times where it was, um, it was, you know, it was interesting because I was kind of going in and out of acting and in and in and mm-hmm. in, in, in and out of. Um, but I think, you know, one of the things is in with the plus size industry is they um, they just it, it's an, it's a footnote to what the industry is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're I, I was in, in a fitting and somebody said, I need another pair of fat pants. And I said, I'm deaf too. Okay. Right. <laughs> you right, know, right. Because it was like, and I had to have yeah. a sense of humor about it, you know, because uh-huh. right. thank God I had a sense of humor and thank goodness that, yeah, you know, I was able to. Right. And not take that stupid right. shit take to it heart. And take it yeah. and again, right. and paying I, it forward, I, serving it up. You're, t- you're doing mm-hmm. it. And you don't lecture to them. You make them laugh. Right. Don't lecture. Right. Laugh. Always. Laugh, 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 laugh. I love that. Everybody another laugh. one, another laugh saying, a little, don't learn lecture, a lot. laugh. Come, come We've got so many, so many <laughs> sayings for yes, t-shirts. Exactly. This, this a lot episode. of trademark in here today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Catherine Schuller, I, Schuller, I am so grateful for your yes, coming and hanging out with us today. so fun. Oh my God, we have and great we've time. Got, we've got so many more stories. We've got to have you back on again. Yeah, part two. <laughs> part two. Oh, we need part two. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, a whole bunch of questions. Right. For you. Absolutely. Go into the nineties then. <laughs> yes, but thank you so Decades. very much. Thank and again, you. how can people find out more about you? Well, go to Cosmoda because that's really where I'm putting all my energy now. Okay. Cosmoda, cosplayrunway.com. And, Cosplay, um, C-O-S-P-L-A-Y. Yep. And I'm the doing. Bottom. There we go. I'm doing something thank you, at. Um, for fashion week and Ooh, it will probably be um on there and it's kind of it's gonna be kind of cool i really think you know i'm 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 aligning with these cosplayers who are actors and singers and nice. dancers and fire eaters yeah and yeah fire eaters. Fun. yeah and they just they resonate with me so i'm just yeah, so I happy you. to to be moving into that direction and helping them elevate the platform of of cosplay because it. it's Absolutely. cool and there's mark energy there all the time uh-huh. my yep. energy is right there my husband is right there and i, I can it. keep him alive and i uh, i don't think you know if, when you're married to a comic book guy till death do you part is not so yeah. it's, right because you know, it when lasts he, a lot longer yeah after. yeah and, <laughs> a, lot longer. Afterlife a lot of comic there. books in that <laughs> a lot of afterlife in that and after and and parallel universes and yeah. all that yeah. where, where it. There. And, you know he just he was the ultimate prankster when i <laughs> when i first uh came back from the hospital after he had had the heart attack i opened the will up and said i want to be cremated and my ashes put into a comic book oh Oh. So I threw him into his work. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. All right. On that note, Catherine, thank you. Catherine Audience, Schu- thank you for tuning in today. Catherine Schuler, right here. <laughs> right thank here. Thank you so much, thank honey. You. Thank you. Great show. <laughs> Always keep them laughing. Yeah. <laughs> keep them laughing. <laughs>